Welcome back to the fuel injected boat series. In this episode I want to show you uh, some updates to the EFI system I've put in, some of the tuning I've done, some thermostat issues with uh, not the boat not warming up all the way, and uh, I'll show you some of the settings in the Holly sniper system that we can play with to try to get the boat running a little bit better. I'm also going to add a second battery because my battery is getting old and uh, sometimes I have to crank on it more than I'd like to. So with that being said, Let's get on the water and play with the boat. Okay, we just got on the water. A little bit of trouble at the ramp. This thing runs really rich when it's cold. And unfortunately, the boat is going to take a while to warm up. So we were running it on the uh, we were running it on the trailer last night and we couldn't get it above 120. And it, it just kind of stays in 13 uh, to 1 air fuel ratio. So we are going to go flog it, see if we can't get it warmed up, see if we can't get it learned. Otherwise, I might have to try to find a different way to program this thing that doesn't include uh, warming up so hot. I finally realized I needed to just check the obvious problem here, which is going to be a stuck open thermostat. For whatever reason, when I was putting the injection system in before, I never checked that. Well, there's your problem. So we put a new thermostat in and that took care of the uh, temperature problem. Now the boat warms up to 160 no problem. So we can move on from that as a tuning problem. While the boat's in the garage and getting worked on, this is a great time to add in a second battery setup. What I want to have is my stereo running off of the second battery so that I can leave the stereo on while we're sitting at the beach and not worry about killing the engine start battery. I'm also going to add an isolator which will allow the second battery to give the first battery a boost while cranking. Okay, the first part is to get that old battery out. And as you can see, that battery is from 2015. That makes it seven years old. And that's about as long as I would want to run that's any battery in a marine type situation. Number two. But I slide it over to the second battery spot so it can run the radio since it is still in okay condition. And I install a brand new battery for the engine start battery. Boom. Perfect. Okay, so I'm putting in this sure power battery separator it's got a white rogers solenoid so it's a heavy duty very reliable piece uh, it's got a bunch of connections i need to make ground start signal uh, and then the power for the two batteries so let's start wiring it up and we'll see what we get out of it first thing i'm gonna do is mount it just above the main battery because all my start signal and stuff is right there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to run the ground to the ground point on the engine block where the other battery grounds so that will give them both a nice good connection so for battery cables I am using old 6-7 diesel cables that I've replaced for either corroded positive, corroded negative and I've got enough of these laying around now that I've got some extra cable so this is a ground one out of a harness that had a bad positive and the ground's still in good shape and so on this end that's the only way we can get it to fit it'll go on there and then we have our studs that'll take the radio connections and so now I just need to run this cable behind the engine and it'll go back here and I'll secure it up to the rest of that harness on the transom. So I'm trying to run the positive cable now and I have temporarily secured it to the mount. That'll insulate it. It's not actually powered and live. 
and uh, but that'll give me a pretty good idea of what the measurement needs to be as I'm pulling it through here. Ooh. We'll cut that and put a end on it. Yeah, backwards. I wanted to show how I finished this terminal end, and I ordered these terminals with heat shrink off of Amazon. So first I just need to strip back some insulation and then fit the terminal in there. Now you need something to crimp these and I don't have any kind of special cable crimping pliers. But what I did find in my stash was a ball bearing that will fit in the vise uh, little pockets for the screw holes. And I can crimp this down pretty good and it makes a really nice crimp press type uh, fit. And so once that's done, I'm just going to slide some heat shrink over and seal that up. Since this is a marine application, you want everything sealed up the best it can be from corrosion. wire in there. I'll go to that battery there. See up honestly and then have that come back down just to keep it off that other bar right there. Okay, we just have to tighten that down. Uh oh. Okay. Well, that's already trying to do things. Okay, so for my particular install, I needed the ground on the automatic isolator, and then I need to add a start signal. That's going to let the automatic isolator connect that backup second battery if it needs it. So I need to get the start signal off of the starter here and I've got that little stud loosened up so that I can just jumper a wire from there over to there and then I need to run separate power and ground from the new battery up to the console for radio power so I've got ooh, uh, a couple rolls of wire, and let's get to building these harnesses. Okay, so now I have this wire connector that was hanging out down there that is for radio memory, so I need to move that over to the new battery as well, so it stays separated from the boat starting battery. At this point I needed to run a new secondary power up to the fuse panel because the radio was connected to the main power bus off the ignition switch. So we'll connect that secondary power and then I'll be able to test the radio and see if it is running on that secondary battery. Okay. All right, now we just need to add the radio wiring to the battery here. Okay, so we got the 
the memory wiring and the actual power for the radio. So really just changing where the power comes from. And it's got this little cap. That's fun. And that should do it. We should be all set up now. All right, let's go test the radio. So that test was a success. The second battery is hooked up connect correctly just to the radio. Let's do a starting test and that works great. Now one thing you can hear there is the solenoid clicking on and off. But you can also hear it's got a rough idle. So I'd like to address the idling issue next. The Holly Sniper EFI system has almost more tuning possibility than is practical. Uh, I know that you do need it to do some advanced stuff, but even me as a long time uh, automotive mechanic that's familiar with this kind of stuff, a lot of this tuning just goes over my head and it really takes a lot of time to dive into this, to find all the settings, to find the setting you're looking for. So I finally dialed down to idle air control and uh, I started playing with the hold position. Now this is going to be when you're off idle, where the idle air condition hold position is. And so on a boat, that's kind of a problem with trolling speed. So here I initially set it a little bit too high and I ended up with too high of a trolling speed. So a little bit of research and I found out I want that idle air control position to be sitting around 20% at idle. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the throttle to shut and not completely shut off the air so that it's relying so heavily on the idle air control solenoid. So now that I have that turned uh, back open a little bit, I go ahead and start the boat and I monitor it. And I do find that it uh, does idle down to about 20% idle air control position. So uh, after I did that, boy, the boat returns to idle so much better. So that's definitely, if you're having trouble tuning uh, a Holly Sniper or any of these electronic fuel injection set uh, kits, that was one that was really big for me, getting the idle uh, to set right when I'm pulling up to a dock. Okay, we just got to the launch. All the settings have been updated. Let's do a cold start. I'm not gonna touch anything, just the key. Put the outdrive down. Okay, and let's see what happens. So that fired right up. Now, uh, let's see if we have any stalling issues here at the ramp. See if it'll take a little bit of power. I always like to let it warm up on the trailer just for a second. Even with all this, we're still the quickest boat launchers out there. Okay, I got a solid idle. I'm going to try forward gear. So it's going to push on the trailer just a little bit. Okay, it dropped right into gear. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. Nope, nope, nope. Why is he stalling? You can hear it on the idle air control pretty hard right there. Alright, I think we're good. I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse. Nope. I killed it. So we're out of the launch. We had a little bit of difficulty there getting it started. Uh, you can watch on there the air fuel ratio jumps up to about 30 to 1. So it's definitely a lean stall. I think I need to buy or fabricate some sort of AN fuel pressure tester. Alright, so we're in reverse. I'm away from the dock now, so I'm not as worried about Blocking up early morning launching, they're stumbling. Let's try forward. Okay, that transition from reverse to forward went good. You can hear the idle air control kind of. Uh, that whistling from what I'm reading 
is you can hear the idle air control whistling in and out and that's um, the computer trying to trying to adjust that idle so turn the screw in a little bit um, I think I had it relying on idle air control too much and not enough on base uh, throttle plate position so uh, we'll just wait for Debra to come back from parking the truck and I'll pick her up another uh, nerve-wracking situation being at the at the dock with the boat you're not sure is gonna die at idle but um, hopefully we're getting it dialed in this morning so one issue that came up with that off idle uh, idle air control setting is that when you're trying to go through a no wake zone if that's set too high so I had it at uh, 60 percent and 40 percent it causes um, you're, you're off idle trying to go through a slow wake zone and it causes you to lose a certain window of uh, trolling speed and so it's either too fast for the no wake zone or full idle which would be a little too slow so now I've got that set to 20% and this seems to be a good uh, idle speed with no wake so this will be a hot restart after we just fish the spot a little bit fuel pump primes gives a little shot A little bit surging. That's so real lean on start up there for a little bit. Let's see if it'll go in and out. It's going too rich. And we'll see if it'll go into gear without stalling. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. You gotta go about that far before you start getting any TPS reading. All right, let's uh, find a new fishing spot. Okay, so one thing I'm finding is that when I'm cold starting the boat, it's running a little uh, lean, then a little way too rich and I'm needing to let it just idle for a second until I get that air fuel ratio stabilizes back around 14.7 uh, to 1 at idle and uh, so that's kind of um, and then it'll go in gear and everything's fine I'm looking at the maps and it looks like it's really rich uh, at the 150 to 160 on cold start so I'd like to drop that entire map down and lean the whole thing out and see if that does anything so maybe we'll play with that next so I spent the rest of the day messing around with all kinds of settings in the Holly Sniper EFI. And like I said, there's just so many settings and it really just takes a lot of time to kind of tweak one thing and if that doesn't work, put it back. Tweak another thing, if that doesn't work, put it back. In the end, I kind of got to a point where I could start the boat up, let it idle for about 20 to 30 seconds, and then I could drop it into gear and it wouldn't stall and it would run great all day long. So I've got a little bit of a bug to work out. So we're just sitting here waiting for the launch to clear up. We came out at the busiest time. And uh, engine's idling perfect, drops in gear perfectly, pops out of gear perfectly, no stalling. Uh, other than the clicking from that 12 volt separator, I might have to do something else with that. That might not work out, but uh, we're just waiting for our truck to come down and it's idling perfect. But just like that, summer was over and it was time to winterize the boat. So I disconnect the batteries and drain the engine block. And that's about all I do. I'll throw some fuel stabilizer in the tank. And that's about it for the winter. I don't do any winter fishing or anything. Uh, it's time to move on to other hobbies for the fall. And that's it. So the boat's put away and we're ready for our fall activities. I hope you guys enjoyed this update on putting a Holly Sniper EFI into the boat. Uh, it's been a, a really fun project and I think it's made the boat run a lot better. If you enjoy this kind of content, I think you'll love what we're doing on this channel. We're always tinkering with something. Check out the Willys Jeep rebuild. We're going to start working on the lawn tractor snow blower. I've got some work to do on an old F-250. So we're always tinkering with something here in the shop. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and we'll see you in the next one.